Uh, the Dean is in Orlando at a Hilton Owners Convention, so uh, he sends his regards. And by the way, he was also quoted in the Wall Street Journal today on an article about uh, if you haven't stayed at a teaching hotel, you ought to try it. So if you get a chance, go look it up online. Um, I'll start with the hotel. As you all are aware, hopefully aware, there was a $30.4 million bond, revenue bond, approved by the Board of Regents of the State of Texas for the expansion of the hotel. We will go from 86 rooms to 150, 151 rooms. We should start mid next year, probably late summer. Uh, the process has started with the hiring of architectural firm Kirksey and construction firm of PPR. Uh, this is gonna be a long process, so as uh, we talked about earlier today, uh, don't sit there and go, boy, when's it going to be done? This is going to be several years. As a matter of fact, occupancy at this point is looking to be somewhere around January or February of 2023. Um, so the planning process alone will take up a good nine or ten months. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow, actually, to start the real nitty-gritty, and that will be on the first and second floor programming needs of both the South Wing and the hotel and the West Wing Center for Student Success. So we've got a long road ahead of us, but it's going to be an awesome project. Um, and we will keep everybody posted as progress was made. But again, thanks for everybody supporting it, and it's a great time for the hotel. Again, what a great opportunity for our students, which is who we're really all about, that they're going to get to live the opportunity of seeing a hotel go from where it is today and the whole process through what it's going to be like to go almost double in size. So it's pretty cool. Um, along that same line, we have uh, changed the curriculum, as I think the Dean outlined earlier in the last year or so, and we started our new curriculum drive this semester. And so with that, we have folks that, students that are already getting ready and need the old curriculum to finish out their student career, and those new students who start the new curriculum. So we really have curriculums running concurrent with each other through probably what will be at least this semester and well in the spring, and then we'll go full time into the new curriculum. We do have two faculty positions that are vacant that we're looking to fill, uh, the primary one being revenue management. And again, that follows the four tracks now that are of the student curriculum drive. So we're real excited. As we were talking about earlier at the board meeting, the curriculum change is as important because what it does is it helps set up that we and the faculty are teaching the students the skill sets that they're going to need upon graduation for what the industry is looking for. And so wouldn't it be remiss if we went through all this education and experiential learning and we didn't have you prepared for what the industry is looking for. So that's a lot of the growth of the college and it's the growth of our curriculum too. So again, we're excited about it. We also have a new uh, culinary director, um, uh, Melissa Mansky. She comes to us from the uh, Guthrie Center where she was the culinary advisor there for the last several years. She's awesome, we're looking forward to her taking the reins. This is also curriculum change. So where we've had for many years, all the students had to go through foods one and two. Uh, there was a, a thought process that said, wow, well, if I'm going into revenue management or accounting for a hotel, do I really need to know how to scale a menu from four to 400 and the difference of a buffalo chopper and a bang marie? And I think the desire was, let's change that curriculum so that we really give everybody what they need, as I described before. But food and culinary-wise, there is still a need for that and a desire. So that will now be a high-level elective that, again, Melissa will be teaching. And in fact, it is in the new $1.4 million Cisco Student Instructional Kitchen that we have completed last year. So we're excited. All good. Um, we finished the year as a college and as a hotel in great financial shape. Uh, the dean and the business uh, department have done a super job of managing the expenses well we're growing the revenues that we have to grow and it gives us the perfect gap of being able to do some of the special things that we want to do and we're real pleased that we're able to get to those some of the improvements that we've been able to use these extra dollars for a lot of new carpeting uh, we have painted many of the classrooms we've also upgraded all of the projectors in every one of the classrooms so we're excited about that we also took upon the opportunity over the last year or two to have a safety committee, and every one of the recommendations of the safety committee have also been enacted, and probably one of the most important, every room now has a monitor in it, and that monitor is hardwired to the UHPD department. Uh, Miguel, please, thank you. <laughs> so it's in the back. So aside from knowing what time it is, 
um, in the case of an emergency situation, whatever that may be, and if the power goes out, is direct hard wire. So in case of any emergency where a lot of the professors and faculty might in fact have you please turn your phone off, they have their phone turned off, they're teaching, and there's an emergency, how would you know if there is one? So now we have that in every room. So I think, again, a great step in the right direction given the world and the environment that we live in today. So we're trying to be proactive in these areas. Hopefully we never do it ahead of time for time. Um, let's see, want to make sure again, we had a great uh, welcome picnic, something that we started a few years ago. A lot of the faculty are there, many of the alumni are there, thank you that all came. And it's a really great opportunity. We do it the Sunday before the first day of class Monday, and we had it on a Sunday again, and it was great. We had about 35 new students, but we also encourage their parents. They're here to drop them off. Wouldn't it be great if now they can start assimilating into the culture that is Hilton College? And that's a lot of what it's about. Meant to be casual, meant to be carefree, meant to be just kind of fun. Again, a lot of you all were there helping just make this, hey, welcome, instead of what happened, where did I end up here? So we're doing those kinds of things on a regular basis. We also have an ice cream social that the dean started two years ago. And this is gonna be in September, and this is for the freshmen last year, top performers that are back and we just want to thank them for being such a great student and helping our college continue on with the great path it is. So we have that ice cream social. Once again, a lot of faculty and staff will be there. Not that we're important, but we just want the students to know that we really do appreciate the value that they bring to the college through their efforts. Um, we have the Hilton Hangout. Again, there's so much I gotta remember here. But again, started this two years ago, an opportunity driven by the advisory council from the dean for students. And it truly is a happy hour concept environment. And it's just for the students to network with each other, right? If you don't have the people that sit beside you or the people that you know, how do you get to know the other couple hundred students that are here? So the students set up a whole environment that's just kind of a hangout. Uh, Dr. Barth last year was the MC. I think he enjoyed it as much as anybody. And as I kidded earlier too with the group, uh, for those of us that are maybe beyond our student years, if you want to test your relevancy, go poke your head in there and see how old we really all are. Uh, <laughs> but more importantly, how much fun they're having, and that's what it's for. We want to create that great culture of we're inclusive, that everybody's together in this, and in fact, we're going to learn, we're going to have a lot of fun. So every chance we get, ice cream, hangouts, I want to be a student. And last but not least, probably the great masterpiece, right? Debbie and her team have done just a great job on the nine months of this that it took for them to do it. But I think there's a story behind kind of how we got here too. So I've been here now just shy of three years, but one of my first meetings was the committee. And uh, we had great ideas. The great idea store was wide open. And we had some good thoughts around it. And then we started kind of whittling it down and thinking about how do we really not let this milestone go by. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we maybe recognized the top 50 alumni? Well, that was a great idea, except we were going to really probably make mad the other 7,500 that <laughs> didn't make the cut, right? So good idea, just had to morph a little bit. Then we had some ideas about various functions and things that we could do. And as it kept growing and talking about and some went by the wayside, new ideas came on, it really came about, we need a day on, and we need a celebration. We can't let the 50th go by. And so a number of the alumni really stepped up and said, we gotta have a gala, let's help get this gala done. And so in fact, we have that on Tuesday, October 15th, coming up next month. We're pleased that out of the 60 tables we had for sale, we have sold close to 50. Uh, most of you should have gotten your invitations by now. And so hopefully again, if you haven't made a decision, please come, it's gonna be a super evening and a great event. And at the same time, the great idea of the 50 great alumni morphed into what are the 50 great things about the Hilton College? And so from a, from a great idea came even a better idea. Uh, just took a lot of work. Uh, Debbie will tell you and her team of Katie and Nicole and Pearl, they learned as much about the college as, as anybody by just trying to put the book together. They interviewed a lot of people. They spent hours in the archives. I hope all of you have it. I think most of you are going yes. If you haven't, please let us know, particularly Miguel in our office. If somebody hasn't received it, we really do want to know, because that means we probably didn't get your right address, and we want to make sure that correction happens. 
and uh, again, we're very proud of it. And again, we hope that this book is really more organic than static, and that it is a live piece that you're going to enjoy for many years. We're certainly going to use it, and we're going to continue to use it as a marketing piece for the college too. So we're we're, we're proud of it. We're happy. Um, in the advancement world, we mentioned the gala, and again, if you haven't uh, decided if you're going to go, please come. We'd love to have you. It's going to be a super event. Uh, we have in the giving world, which is the world of development that we live in, we're proud to say that annually the university has a faculty and staff annual giving drive. In the last three years now, we have had 100% participation from our faculty and staff in that event. So again, everybody's given what they can, but everybody gave, and we're very proud of that. Monday is the first day of school 50 years later. And we have a day of service to, uh, to commemorate that day. <coughs> Again, came out of the 50th anniversary committee. And what we thought was, you know, what would be great instead of a party or a lunch or something? How about if we gave back? And so we came up with one idea that morphed into two, that morphed into three, that morphed into four. So we've got functions going on at the Hope Farm. We've got the Bloodmobile that'll be here, where our students have signed up and are going over to the food bank. And we've got a group going over to Coventry House at Coventry House also to help over there. So there's something for everybody to do. We're going to have lunch for everybody that participates at 1. And then at 4.30 in the Shamrock, we're going to have cake and champagne for those of you who would like to come by. We do have about 80 people signed up, so please let us know you're coming so we can accommodate. We'd love to have everybody come by and just uh, cheers on 50 great years. Tailgates are upon us, and Miguel uh, and his team uh, slung it out on Saturday uh, in about 100 degree temperatures, and by golly, they were out there. But we've been able to partner with some super folks. Molina's was here on Saturday providing the food. We've got Whataburger coming up. We've got Chili's coming up. Cisco's going to be part of it. We've, again, been able to partner with a lot of our industry friends that have said, no, I want to be part of what you all are doing. And they're glad to be there and setting up and food complimentary. One of the few colleges that still offers tailgates as complimentary. We're going to continue that on as long as we can. And um, we've got a great membership and mentorship program going on. Yasmin has been helping do that for us. We have over 80 mentors and over 80 mentees. It's probably the most we've ever had. Um, so we're really pleased that we're able to have as many past alumni and students that have said, yes, I want to give back, and as many students that now have maybe figured out, yeah, this is a really good thing for me to tell you, partner up with, how do I really accelerate and advance my learning? So got a great mentorship program going on. Got all sorts of other things. Those are some of the highlights. I don't want to take the day, but I do want to thank you again for being here. Thank you for the support. The Dean thanks you, and uh, go Cougs. Okay. UHAA is having their staff retreat this evening, so no one will be here. So we're just going to skip over that part. Um, and so, Mr. We're Miguel, actually, Joel actually covered everything. Development and alumni, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I will say just one thing briefly. If in case y'all do come across anybody where you yourself did not receive one of the 50th anniversary books. Uh, please update your information with us. We have the link available. Uh, get in contact with us afterwards. If you come across anybody who says, I didn't get a book, what we are doing is, is we're checking the addresses of what we have on our file when we sent the books out compared to what's coming in off of the update info. So if they're different, we'll certainly send you a book, not a problem. If they're a match, it's possibly it's in the mail, give it about a week or two, and if not, we'll get you a book. You all right? So just want to give you all a heads up and let you know how, how that's working. All right, so how many people in here have ever been to the Alumni Awards? Great, we've got a few. How many are Alumni Award recipients in the room? We've got several of those here as well. So, Alumni Awards, we have not set a date yet, but it will be next March, April, somewhere in that range, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so, well, so for what the here and now, what we're gonna need, what we really need from everyone who's here are some nominations, um, you know, every year, there are some years where I feel like we have plenty, and there are other years where I feel like we're, we're begging people for, for nominations. Each and every one of us should know some people, even if that person is you, who's who's great and has made some great contributions, and done some awesome things out in the industry. Like, give us some nominations. Let's promote what everybody's doing out there, and let's recognize people and celebrate the wins that they that, that they have accomplished in their lives, the way they've given back to the college, the way they've given back to the industry, because we should be celebrating each other. So, send in your nominations and. Um, 
categories. Great. So um, we have distinguished young alum. We have a distinguished young alum who's here right now. So someone who has been out of college for for 10 years or less and has made an impact in the industry. Uh, distinguished alum, someone who's been out for longer than that. We also have a uh, distinguished service award. We have distinguished faculty. Um, what am I missing? Honorary. 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 Yeah. And so um, honorary alums that uh, the, the board recognizes as well. We have some honorary alums here too. And I always try to never let a, a moment pass whenever Carol <laughs> Carol is in uh, the room to say thanks for bringing back the alumni awards. It's something that we let go by the wayside, and and our uh, our rights alum here thought that it was important enough to bring back. So, um, in short, please give us some recommendations. Let us know who you'd like to honor. Um, the next time it rolls around, please show up. It's a great event. It's a lot of fun. We try to keep the tickets affordable so that everyone can participate. And um, yeah, thanks. Go Cougs. business anyone would like to bring to the floor yeah yeah no I do I, I just want to follow up with one more reminder um, just you know next time we've got events going on or there's something going at the college you know grab a friend grab somebody you haven't reached out to in a while bring them you know all of our alumni engagement is done through our alumni it's 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 you and you showing up to these events and fighting traffic and being here today and you know again spreading the word so you know share on Facebook pick up the phone, send a text, send a tweet, you know, whatever, but whatever we can do to really help um, drive engagement is really important to us. And I did want to add one thing, and I, I should have done this introduction earlier, but I do want to um, give some recognition to one of our outgoing board members, Randy McCaslin, who has been on the board for 10 years. Um, so we are, we've been so thankful for everything that he has done for us um, as an alumni board. And um, so just real quick, here's a list of upcoming events if you want to plug them into your calendar. Um, also, um, most of uh, all of these events should also be on the college calendar and the UHAA calendar, so available in both places. Um, and, you, and the Facebook on the page. Facebook alumni page and your app. So since Mike today's not here, I'll do it for you guys. So if you go to the app store, there you just type in Houston alumni and this, this guy will pop up. And it has all the things you ever need right there. <laughs> um, so there's calendars events. You can pick what constituent group you belong to or groups. Um, your alumni card will pop up so that allows you into tailgates and they're working on partnering with local businesses to give you discounts and all those types of things. So it's a very well done app. It's handy. It's useful. Download it. Um, so it's 630 on the dot. The meeting's officially adjourned. Please go outside and have some refreshments. Thank you everyone for coming.